<coughs> so, well, tonight I'd like to read for you um, a, a short um, prose piece um, called, it's called A Broken Mirror. Last fall, I broke my favorite mirror, the little round one. It reminded me of the moon and of the round windows in the double doors of the silver dollar, the bar in Georgetown mother took us to when we were little, where Helen and I would get Shirley Temples. I think I was four and Helen was five at the time. In the back wall of every booth at the Silver Dollar was a round blue tinted mirror and the top of the brown's blue mirror as well. The round windows in the double swinging doors of the Silver Dollar made me think of sand dollars and the roar of the sea at night, the pale precarious sand and the onrushing roar of the sea and the silent moon. I never saw myself in the mirrors of the silver dollar. They were too high up but I think they are the first mirrors I remember, empty, round, and blue. It was only later that I grew shy of my mother, like some strange breathing thing, and she grew shy of me. I had never looked in a mirror then, When I was 15, one day at military school they showed us a movie and a young man became beautiful to me. It was during military training class. There were about 20 of us boys in the room, all classmates, all boys the same age. They showed the movie on one of those old reel-to-reel -reel projectors. The movie was of wounded soldiers from the Vietnam War. This was in 1972, so it had probably all been filmed recently. Young soldiers with horrible wounds, severed limbs, one young man whose intestines were spilling out and had to be scooped back into his abdomen. Short, gruesome sequences, panting bellies. They did not show the soldiers' faces, just different parts of their bodies. Uniforms peeled back to expose young men's flesh and always some horrible wound. I guess it was shot in some sort of hospital tent. From time to time, the hand or arm of a nurse would appear, a young woman's hand. One shot all but obliterated all the others from my mind. It was of a young man lying on a cot. All that could be seen of him was his torso and his thighs and one of his arms. He was naked. He lay with thighs spread and you could see his breath come in short spasmodic pantings of his flanks and abdomen. His left flank, 
was covered by a gauze bandage taped down all round the edges by thick swatches of tape. It was obvious the bandage covered some grievous wound, the shallow, frantic spasms of his breath were those of someone in shock. But he was beautiful, perfect, like a sculpture, and at the crux of his thighs, his manhood was perfect and beautiful as well, innocent and vulnerable, the clenched offering of testicles, the tender penis. The penis seemed to be jutting up slightly, held away from the torso by the catheter planted in its tip. And then, for a second, the hand of a nurse entered the frame, and then the soldier was gone, succeeded by other maimings, other wounds. But I did not see them. I saw the young, panting soldier who would remain in my mind for years, waiting to be given a face and the name of love. Thanks. <laughs>